This is the unanimous judgment of the Supreme Court in the case of the Director of Public Prosecutions against Gerard Adams. Uh, I will summarize the judgment. Uh, from 1922, successive items of legislation authorized the detention without trial of persons in Northern Ireland, a regime commonly known as internment. In the early part of the 1970s, this operated in the following way. Initially, an interim custody order, which I shall refer to as an ICO, was made. That was made under Article 4 of the Detention of Terrorists, Northern Ireland uh, Order, 1972. That legislation prescribed that such an order could be made with the Secretary of State considered that an individual was involved in terrorism. On foot of the ICO, that person was taken into custody. The person thus detained had to be released within 28 days unless the Chief Constable referred the matter to a commissioner. The commissioner had power to make a detention order if satisfied that the person was indeed involved in terrorism. If not so satisfied, the release of the person detained would be ordered. An ICO was made in respect of the appellant, Gerard Adams, on the 21st of July, 1973. He was detained on foot of that ICO and its detention was authorized by a commissioner. Mr. Adams attempted to escape from detention twice and he was twice convicted of attempting to escape from lawful custody on the 20th of March 1975 and the 18th of April 1975. Senior Crown Council for Northern Ireland had given an opinion to the government in July 1974 regarding the legality of the ICO which had been issued in Mr Adams' case. It transpired uh, that it had not been considered personally by the Secretary of State. In the opinion of Crown Council, it was suggested that, in order to be valid, the Secretary of State should have considered personally whether an ICO ought to have been issued in Mr Adams' case. That opinion was disclosed under what is known as the 30-year rule. The 30-year rule is the informal name given to laws in the United Kingdom and other countries, which provide that certain government documents will be released publicly 30 years after they were created. Uh, following the release of uh, Crown Council's opinion, Mr. Adams appealed against his convictions. He claimed that since the ICO was invalid, his detention was unlawful and that he could not therefore have been validly convicted of his attempting to escape from a custody which was itself unlawful. The Court of Appeal in Northern Ireland dismissed his appeal and Mr Adams appealed to this court. The Supreme Court unanimously allows Mr Adams' appeal. We hold that the power under Article 4 of the 1972 order should have been exercised by the Secretary of State personally and therefore that the making of the ICO in respect of the appellant was invalid since the Secretary of State had not himself considered it. In consequence, Mr Adams' detention was unlawful. Hence, his convictions of attempting to escape from lawful custody were likewise unlawful. We consider a number of decided cases, most notably those concerned with what is known as the Cartona Principle. The Cartona Principle refers to the decision of the Court of Appeal in 1943 in a case called Cartona Limited against the Commissioners of Works. In that case, it was accepted as a principle of law that the duties imposed upon ministers and the powers given to ministers may normally be exercised under the authority of those ministers by responsible officials of their department. 
Having reviewed those cases carefully, we conclude that the Kaltuna principle does not apply in this instance. The structure of the 1972 order is such that it was clearly intended that the making of an ICO, as opposed to the signing of the order, had to be the outcome of personal consideration by the Secretary of State. In this case, a minister in the Northern Ireland office, rather than the Secretary of State, had made the ICO. That minister could have signed the order, but he could not validly make it. As a result, Mr. Adams' detention had not been lawfully authorised. His detention was therefore invalid, and it followed that he should not have been convicted of attempting to escape from lawful custody for the elementary but inevitable reason that the custody in which he had been detained was in fact not unlawful. His appeal is therefore allowed and his convictions are quashed. That's the end of the summary.